Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Behind the Veil, a show that provides insight into the world of weddings. I'm your host, Keith Willard, and this is your co-host, Marcy Gutenberg, with An Affair to Remember by Marcy. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Keith. Hello, everybody. So, hello, everybody. So we're having some connect uh, connection uh, issues with Marley Major, who is the CEO of Party Goddess. So we're going to be bringing our, her on shortly. So I apologize about the delay. But so, Marcy, I mean, I'm kind of excited about this this segment. So I'm really hoping that she is able to make it. Oh, there she is. Oh, please. So I'm I'm really hoping that we we can make this work because Marley is the CEO of the Party Goddess, a nationally acclaimed full service planning and catering company, and the author of "But Are You Making Any Money?" and uh, and she's done events from some of, for some of the like high, like crazy famous people. Famous. Oh my Very God! Like people. Chris Martin, Pierce Brosnan, Kelly Preston, Britney Spears, Snoop Dogg. I mean. Okay, I have to tell you, if I was doing an event for Snoop Dogg, I, I, I would be really interested in like how that all. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure she has a juicy gossip, but she can't talk about it publicly. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of NDA agreements, you know, NDA mm -hmm. uh, contracts in, in place. But while she is working on getting connected with us, you, you know, you and I had talked a little bit about like events and, and both of us have done events for famous people in the past, you know, and, and the thing is, is that I, you know, I did Mark Cuban's 40th birthday. I did Michelle Boutou's wedding, who's uh, an up and coming like comedian comedian, you know, and the one thing I, I can say across the board is that they want the same things that we all want. Oh, you yes. Know? They really want a wedding that is that speaks to them personally and something that they can look back on with joy and happiness. And it's personalization as to what appeals to them. I mean, every couple is different from one another. So what you think celebrities want may not necessarily be what you would really expect. I mean, sometimes they, they're more subdued and sometimes they're over the top. Well, and that's the thing is that, you know, here we are as, let's say, laymen in the world of events. And there is an idea that we all kind of strive to as far as like, what do we want our event to be like? And sometimes it's compared to the Joneses, right? Sometimes it's yes. compared to a wedding that you went to in New Hampshire and you were like, oh my God, I went to my cousin's wedding and it was amazing. And they had 18 different stations during the cocktail reception. And I want something just like that. And you're like, look, that's not your <laughs> wedding. That's not your wedding. It's not, the, it may not be the personality. It's not exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, you have to do you when it comes to your wedding. Mm. And it, and the same thing can be said with invitations. I tell people all the time, it's like, um, and you may agree with me or disagree with me. And this is, this is an interesting topic. Actually, I have always told people, my clients that the save the dates is an opportunity for them to really show their personality. That's absolutely an, right that's an oh, opportunity yes. to like have some fun do something really crazy a little over the top and then the invitations bring it back a little bit do a little bit more of what you would expect for a wedding you know a little bit more traditional what are your thoughts on that right i think you know the the save the date is really about as you said the personality of the couple bringing out their fun side their playful side and so forth and then when you get back to the invitation part that's really setting the tone for the actual event itself. So whatever you're planning to do for your event, taking into time, you know, into consideration the time of day from the location to the style that they're wearing, if they want their guests to be in black tie or semi-formal or more casual. I mean, it, it, there's so much that runs the gamut and every couple is different from one another. It really um, you is. know, I, I was just reading an article the other day and it was talking about the call time. And, you know, I mean, if you are going to call your guests earlier than the wedding time, the actual oh. ceremony time, that's this, that's a, also another factor that you want to kind of think about, too, because your guests are going, you want your guests there before you start walking down the aisle. I mean, nothing is more, you know, yeah, but, you know, let me ask away, you about but, that. 
you know what? Let me ask you about that because okay. I get that that question all the time. Yes. People are like, oh, you know what? I'm from, uh, my family is Brazilian or the <laughs> South American or whatever. And they're, mm -hmm. they're always late, always. Mm -hmm. You know, is it appropriate for me to put on an earlier time? Let's say that I want to like walk down the aisle at six o'clock. What would, I, I always tell people to, to put six o'clock. Is that not correct? Maybe I should be telling them 5.30? You could put six o'clock and then you can walk down a few minutes later. But yeah. honestly, I would tell people that maybe you can make an arrangement with the venue to have some kind of beverage upon arrival, maybe a canopy or two. Yeah. And that way it kind of gets them in the door, gets them situated with getting in their seat and it gives you the opportunity to walk down the aisle and really shine without having any interference of somebody walking in at the same time as you. I mean, because the last thing that you want to do yeah. is for your guests to walk in after you. Yeah, but you know, I, I can't even tell you how many weddings I've had where there, there are people, you know, and it, I don't know why it seems to be high heels and tile shoes whenever they're late. <laughs> You know, clickety, 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 click, you know, click, click. exactly. Trying to get to the, the back of, of where, or wherever we are. But, you know, what about the people that arrive on time or arrive early? Don't you, does it feel like we're not doing them justice by putting an earlier time? So let's say six o'clock, because we talked about six o'clock. You know, we put six o'clock on, on the invitations and then we have people that, that, follow the rule and they show up at five for, you know, five 30, five 30. Right. You know, does, does that uh, do them an injustice at the fact that we did a six o'clock time? No, because I mean, if you're having like a, like a, like a half hour cocktail hour kind of thing yeah. where you are just having drinks and so forth, it gives people a chance to say hello to their, you know, to their family or friends or, you know, uh, new meeting new people. It just gives them that opportunity to kind of, brush aside any, you know, if they need to run to the ladies room or men's room, right. it gives them that opportunity, but it does get people more settled down. Um, so in other words, we can, we can buy people's emotion with liquor anyway. So, exactly. <laughs> Marley, welcome to the show. I, oh, you poor thing. I know that we've been having some connection <laughs> issues, but it's great to have you on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Marley Major, the CEO of the Party Goddess, a nationally acclaimed full service event and planning co and catering company, and the author, I don't know how you find time, of uh, But Are You Making Any Money? And she's out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she'll be back on just a moment. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, welcome to live, the, the world of live. So I'm all right. I'm going to go back to the invitation thing because seriously, I, it is a major, it is a major question when it comes to couples about whether or not they should put uh, their actual wedding time on it. So what is the rule when it comes to having the, your invitation time? I mean, the invitation time is really the time of the start of the wedding. Right. Though, if you plan to do like a little half hour cocktail, you don't have to tell your guests that. They right. show up, they're being greeted by people, they're being handed a drink, and then they're able to find their seat and sit down. But do you feel like, it, do you really think that maybe more people should think about having kind of a pre-cocktail idea in order to appease the, the lateness? Because I feel like I feel like we are placating mm -hmm. the late people when it comes to that. Why? I, I don't want to placate people that are late. Screw yes, them. Yes, but sometimes you know, you're you know, late. the venue itself, the location of where the venue is. That yeah. may play a factor. Yeah, Nor but late people, late people are always late. You know, that's what well, I'm saying. People, like, yeah. Late people are always going to be late. You're still going to have people that are going to be late. All right. Well, you know, the ones that are really super late, <laughs> they're, they're going to show up late no matter what. Oh, uh, Marley. Talk, so talking about late. Hi, Marley. Welcome. Hi, Marley. Hey, if you guys, this should be called Behind the Cluster app. Okay, because <laughs> just so you know, I just, like, please understand there's not a chance in freaking hell is not going to do this. Okay. Oh. I have the, the power went out. The oh, internet no. went out. No. We went to somebody's just, and this is a good note for events because by the way, just the <laughs> that we have a battery pack from somebody's truck. Okay. No. And that actually works. And so I said, now order 
the moment this is back on, order three more for events <laughs> so that at least, and I'm just like, okay, the power of the generator, what you need at a celebrity wedding is a generator, evidently, yep. and a battery pack, and, and, and. So I promise you the internet has now come back. The power is back. Oh, and I am no. in front of an orange door with a deadbolt, but whatever. <laughs> We're going to have, listen, I'm yours. It works. You know what? I have to say, so this is what, as event planners, we deal with on a, a weekly basis. You know, we roll with the punches. And, and so, you know, not, knowing that we go live at a specific time, we're like, okay, we'll roll with it. No big deal. No, no worries. But now that you're here, I, I just really want to do your formal introductions. I mean, this is Marley Major, who is the CEO of Party Goddess, a nationally acclaimed full service event and planning and catering company and the author. I don't know how you found time for this, but are yeah. you making any money? And okay, so I'm reading through the list of celebrities yeah. you have done events for. And I'm like, okay, I, I know that person, Chris Martin. Oh, I know Chris Brosnan. Oh, I know Kelly Preston. You know, I, it sounds amazing, right? Doesn't it always? <laughs> it sounds amazing to be the host of a fabulous podcast until. Yes, I do. Exactly, until the power goes out. Yes. Until the power goes out. But you know, but, the, but this is what we, we what we do. And so, you know, the, right. the, one of the questions I really actually wanted to, to because we're going to get into this, because I understand, you know, I want to ask the questions that most people out there are asking about, yeah. like, you know, if you're a celebrity uh, wedding planner or event planner, you know, are, do you still get starstruck? Like now that you've gone, had so many different celebrities that you've dealt with, do you still get starstruck or is it one of those things that you've now kind of put it's, a wall? It's funny you, uh, that you say that because there you very much become like okay next right right but there are a couple people that yes i am still starstruck by and i it, it's hard to explain why because i think everybody's got their own little list of who they'd be starstruck by and sometimes it's actually like i get starstruck by like a business person or something like like if i saw richard branson I think yeah. I'd probably keel over and die, right? So <laughs> random. Whereas if somebody else saw like Camila Cabello, they like my daughter saw Camila, she'd be like, <gasps> I mean, she'd have a seizure right there. Right. Like, forget about COVID. The seizure would take her out. So it's it's just different people. Like before it was always like, oh, there they are. Right. You know? And now I'm kind of like, oh yeah, there they are. Okay, everybody, mm, you know. Bring it down. It Bring it down. Right? Yeah. But I, I still think they're like, like I think if I saw Sean Cassidy, for example. <laughs> Sorry, like I huge. I think I'd be super, super ecstatic. I don't know what else to say. I mean, well, so, so I, okay. So I have to tell you, I, I mean, yeah. as I was, because I, I'm a small business owner, I'm a, yeah. a, I'm a wedding planner here in South Florida, you know, I, and I, I, I never write down questions actually before we get on. God, here. I know it's one of those things, but I actually wrote down some questions ahead of, of, of our conversation because yeah. there were some things that I was really, really interested in. Like, you know, what was it like when you got your first referral from a famous person? Right. You somebody called you and said, hey, uh, by the way, Britney Spears just recommended you. I mean, I would lose my shit, to be honest. Well, <laughs> yeah, obviously, And I still do. And here's the thing. One of the first actually yeah. was Britney Spears, believe Shut it up. or not. And and I remember exactly where I was in my office and somebody said, you know, I knew like there was kind of rumblings like, oh, they were going to email, you know, you hear from people, the publicists and the managers and yada, yada. At that right. point, her original team was in place, like Larry Rudolph and all those guys. And so we got rumblings that that they were going to reach out. And then, right. you know, you're kind of like, mm, whatever, till they actually do. And I remember exactly where I was in the office when somebody said Jamie Spears is on the phone. And I was like, shut up. I mean, shut up. Come on. Shut up. I was what? literally like, like, like on our phone. <laughs> like on our landline, like he's called, like he knows the like. Okay, I'm landline. Like, first of all, hello. Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you've got this. And I was like, this is Marlene. Right. How can I help you? You know, like, how do you say to Jamie Spears? Like, I, I can't. And then he's like, okay, hi. And you're totally business. Like, we're going through the whole deal. And I'm like, absolutely, right. I can help you. I mean, talk about fake it till you make it. Right. Right. A hundred percent. And then 
you know, and then that whole thing just turned into this like crazy. I mean, you know, you're signing confidentiality agreements till the cows come home. And yes, I was about to ask about that. But yeah, who who is so compulsive and like wants to do the right thing. And and, like, I actually read the contracts. And so I actually like go through line by line. And then I know that I'm bound by them. And I know my team is bound by them. So I'm like every ballet, every single person is signing this. I don't care. (laughs) No, it's not just the company. It's every single person. I can get sued personally. They can pierce the corporate veil. They right. can, I mean, you would have thought like Britney Spears was out there with like AK 57s, right? And, I'm like, you know. and then the, I remember the helicopters were coming in. I was like, and we were doing oh, everything. Helicopters, aspect of that event. really? Yes. And they were coming so low. And it was at, not a lot of people know this, but it was at um, Paul Nassif's house, the, the yeah. white. Yeah. House. And then they were on Real Housewives. And they are friends, yeah. Maloof, Adrian Maloof. Yes. They knew Brittany and they were friends with her and the whole deal. And so it was at their house. And I'm like, oh my, like I'm telling them, I swear to God, I didn't tell anybody. Well, you know, you come to learn later. Right. These, they, everybody leaks everything. They right? leaked it themselves, so, probably. Exactly. Maybe. So I'm okay. Not, I, I'm not actually, we're not saying that specifically. Saying we're just saying a possibility. It's only possible that in general, right. celebrities leak things and their teams leak things. Right. And I will say that I did not leak anything hand to God. And the next thing I know, there are hand or wherever you would put a hand to God. And the next thing you know, there are helicopters everywhere. And it was at um, Kitson, <laughs> which at the time was doing a lot of the favors. And so I remember they were trying to follow us out of Kitson to see where we were going to go. And I was like, oh, I will outsmart you every time. Right. I was like, well, we made sure we got the favors before so we didn't have to go to the house. We were going to my house. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm wow. stopping all day long. But so, yeah. Did it's you? Just- so, so, you know, your first celebrity event, obviously, yeah. you probably were a little bit over careful with people following you, right? Right, right. You know. Ha, has thing have have you changed some of the the practices that you do now versus when you first started? I mean, what is what is different from your first celebrity event to now oh, that you go? Things. Why did I waste my time on that? Well, a few things. I I probably am more amped up than I was even before. Here's why, because and and I I'm really good with technology, like, and I've just gotten more better and better at it, and like. So it's almost like I know too much. And so I know all the ways that, you know, your phone can just get like they can get into it. And and remember something. And now we've got drones. Right. And so as a planner, you're already thinking ahead of time. So before when I was planning them, I was trying to concentrate on how to plan for the paparazzi. So, you know, you have your parasols and your umbrellas and whatever, because if you block that shop, they don't like it as much. I mean, granted, if it's a Barbra Streisand, they'll take it with a parasol <laughs> hat and it doesn't matter. But that you still have to, that was how you block the shots. Well, then right. now drones are freaking everywhere, right? Yeah. So much harder to block a shot. So now it's like you're kind of there like with like bees, you know, sort of chasing and blocking. <laughs> And the more he and then remember, then these celebrities, it isn't just the celebrity that's having the party. It's all the freaking celebrity guests because birds right. of a feather flock together. Right. Right. And if there's a be less, to, if there's a be less celebrity that's invited, of course, they're going to leak it because they want oh. their photo oh. taken as they're walking in. Listen, an A minus right now will will, will leak it because we, no, they, nobody's got anything going on. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Everybody's leaking everything, you know, and it, it's just. So I'm, so I'm even more careful. I'm psycho careful about what I put in text messages or anything I put in writing because that's God. something that's changed a lot, right? How many yeah. times have we seen the quote screenshots of the text messages that oh, oh my God people and, and I'm like, oh but I could be Photoshop, not gonna be blah, blah, blah. but no, now I am like, yes, good morning. We'll be there at 10. Whereas whereas normally I'd be like, hey, cool, see ya. Well, yeah. I'm just thinking. Oh my God, I could see this would be like on the news, the most unprofessional planner in the world saying, see ya to produce <laughs> so now I'm like, you know, so I'm very psycho about that. I'm very, very concerned about um, how you block, you know, shots, drone shots and paparazzi right. and like, and then the what if Which plan. You, by the way, it would never be in my, on my list, FYI, as, as a regular event planner. I would never be worried about like paparazzi drone footage. But like, that's a huge thing. And, and you know, I called this, I did an interview um, probably like two or three years ago. 
and somebody said, what's the biggest threat to your industry? And I said, yeah. drones. <gasps> and really? for so many on so many levels and this could this turns into a fascinating conversation which we don't need to but you know drones can now do a lot of things you know amazon yeah. delivering with drones let me tell you somebody can do all kinds of things with drones right so if you figure they can get shots that you don't want right guess what? they can also deliver packages you don't want they can <gasps> also deliver shut up i, I didn't even that. think about this i hate to say that but but that's that's the practical that's, scary. that's the that's talk about behind the veil that's behind the veil that's holy shit planner, I didn't, sorry sorry i didn't thinking, even think about that right because listen a drone can get yeah. any security perimeter and people aren't used to dealing with them yet right you, yes. hear a drone, you see a drone what happens most security teams sure they'll collect the phones right they'll collect all that stuff right they but have how do you protect here. somebody on the team has a weapon right but you're not so me, I might have my parasol, you know, you know, flagging bees here to block the shot. Well, the shot is the least of it. If, they, if that thing is packed with something, right? right? And then what do you do? No one is trained. Oh, well, I should say, Was. very few people in this country are trained. Right. In other countries, guess right. what? That's a reality. That's but I hate yeah. to say it. I think it's going to be way more of a reality for us. Yeah. And I think that that's where... That's going to be an opportunity for planners is to get very high end clients is to have those services and just come right out with it. You know what? If you have a security concern for whatever reason, maybe your company's right. going public, right. maybe you have a scandal, maybe who knows? God knows. Then well, if you can be an expert in something like that. Well, one of my claims to fame is that I did Mark Cuban's 40th birthday. So I had John Mellicamp come and play for 75 of his basketball teams. But this is before drones this is before really social media because he had yeah. just sold yahoo at right. that time right. you know so this is before all of those things and i've right. never had to deal with any of that because i deal with regular people so you know here you are having to like add the layers 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 like an onion to yeah. to your your planning process right. so one of my questions was are the expectations different when dealing with somebody famous versus Absolutely. A, a regular bride. Well, sure. So you have, so a quote, regular bride, right? Yeah. You need to make happy and deal with the fact that, you know, the dad's new wife is, you know, 20 years younger than you are. <laughs> and they don't Hello, Hollywood. Seen with the blah, blah, blah. You know, you have all those things, right? That make it complicated enough in, in a place that is already complicated. Right. And, you know, you have the cell phones and everybody trying to sell shots because in L.A. and New York, people know how to sell shot, how to how to get a hold of the paparazzi and how to sell these shots. But when you're when you have famous people, here's the other thing, too, is that a there is always such a short time frame. I don't know what it is about famous people. It's like, were they going to be on a yacht in the Maldives? And now all of a sudden they're going to be home and they want to do an event. I don't understand. Because the time frames are like this short. Number one. Number two. It's a real every, world, by the way. That's every, like everybody right now. Right. I don't know what every, it is. But like, I mean, like in a minute. But and then, oh, by the way, I'm going to change the entire theme. Yeah. Like, you know, I just booked you yesterday, and I know you just came up with like pink bubble gums and pelicans and whatever. Well, guess what? Now we're going to have dolphins in the pool, and we're going to have Kavalia come. And oh, by the way, and now it's on Friday instead of on Sunday. And you're just, but the thing is, is it's like, they're, it's like, wow. I don't want to say an entitlement thing, but they just, they're used to everybody just making it happen. So I, I think they almost feel like people have superpowers, like their right. agent or their publicist just can get that done. Like, I don't necessarily think that they're trying to be horrible. Right. I think they're just used to wands being waved and it being like Disneyland, like, hi, here's well, your Well, you know, I used to say this about writers. You know, every celebrity comes with a writer. And at one point in their life, they said, you know what? We really like oranges. We want oranges in our, our green right. room this time. Right. And the next time, they may not want oranges, but it's on their writer. And so that right. writer all of a sudden becomes like three pa pages, four pages long full of shit that they would never even ask for it, but yet every single venue has to come up with because now yeah. it's on there. Right, because, because they, they, ask need, for to, it. they yeah. need to Marie Kondo their writers, right? Because they need to <laughs> like, I we love need, it. Right, we need to take the freaking writer and dump yeah. all that stuff into the middle of the table and be like, you know what, freaking me, I'm going to work just now. And now, like, I bop, 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 and I have
haven't eaten chocolate since 1984. <laughs> And right. yeah, so it's a hundred percent Marie Kondo that right. And just go, oh, next, please. Like if I have like water and air at the moment, if I have like, you know, hello, if I have electricity, I'm happy if I have a, but yeah, you have to Marie Kondo the riders. And then here's the thing. Then you take it more seriously. <laughs> but I will tell you, I hate to say this. And I, I'm telling you it's ever since pot was legalized in California. Yes. Hey, I'm just saying. People hey. have gotten more challenged. Right. And I will tell you right now, I'm thinking I'm going to have a freaking rider for yours truly. Like right. the cappuccino should come this, da, 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 when we do the run, you know, the staff run. Because everybody's messing everything up. So I now understand why it has to, you have to literally be like, do you understand? Are you sober <laughs> now when I'm communicating? Because uh, you know, otherwise it's like, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm like, don't look like you've got it. Oh my so God. Do you ask, That's no? crazy. That's do you ask crazy. people to cut down on their rider when you, yeah. get, when you receive it? Well, yeah, you can ask all kinds of things, right? And so, <laughs> but they're not going to say anything. Right. What I try to do though with riders is I go through it first of all, and I decide if there really is a battle to pick there, right? Because if it's, hey, separate the M&Ms. I mean, isn't that amazing? I think it was JLo or somebody was like, oh, I don't want green M&Ms. Today, I'd be like, give me a ton of riders full of no green M&Ms. I'd be right. freaking thrilled. But right. so I go through it and I really decide how much of this is that difficult, right? right. And if it is, it's green M&Ms and, you know, orange gummy bears or whatever, fine. Call it a day. I'll sit there and separate them myself and, you know, be meditative. But right. Where I try to cut down on the riders or or at least get a feel for how important certain items are is for some of the setup. And because that you can be talking about, as you know, can be 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. You know, right. so you can like, yeah. hey, this event is from noon to three. You know, do you need to have all that lighting, blah, 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 that's in your rider? Well, probably is leftover from a rider where they normally do events at night. Right. You know what I mean? So it doesn't hurt exactly. to act. Right. But I would always just like then be prepared that they're not going to take it off. Did you always want to do this? I mean, when you first got into wedding planning, so and, and I'm coming from a new business standpoint, you know, right. I'm here with I, and I love my my brides and and they do an amazing I I feel very close to them I'm connected yeah. to them I don't yeah. pass them on to somebody else kind of right. thing you know I'm I'm their guy right right and I'm I'm assuming that when you got into this world you you had kind of that same world that you were really connected and it's not just emotionally I mean you you become really close yeah. with your your clients i mean i'm still friends with people that i did their wedding 15 years ago and now they're into their second kid and right. i'm like looking at their you know graduation for you know their oldest kind of thing i mean i can see that i mean i would want to be friends with you to like you know like i'm 90 or something oh, but yeah, I get it. But, but you you're know, nice and you're like engaging and but I you know i mean that. but that's what i'm saying it's like you know here you are you're doing these big and and I'm going to go back to something that you said at the very beginning of our conversation, because you said, Jamie called us, Jamie, you know, uh, Jamie Spears called us, but yeah. then manager, publicist, et cetera, got involved in the conversation. That's right? the secret sauce right there is people don't realize with celebrity events, right? There are so many heads to please. So that's what I'm saying. You liken it to, a charity on steroids. And the reason I say that is God bless you. Because you know how when you have a charity, right? You have a committee. Yeah. Yep. Committee sucks. Everybody is just weighing in for the sake of weighing in, right? Because right. they all want to like punch the card, like, hey, I'm valuable on this board. And, and I'm heard. Have, I'm part of it. Yep. And then you have the people who are like, okay, so some of them are trying to raise money. Some of them just want this to be the party of their lifetime that that they didn't get to throw and some of them they're just getting divorced so hi it's the party of my lifetime because now i right. need a man i mean it's everybody has a different agenda but with celebrity stuff what you don't I mean they really have agendas like right. the the publicist wants this far and wide and spun in the most cheerful light possible right the manager kind of along the lines of the publicist but gets more nervous and wants to limit access, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the legal team, which totally came up on site, was 
um, Christian, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but I think Audige, whoever was um, Ed Hardy, okay? Right, right. Gave oh, the Hardy. boys, yeah, gave yeah. Britney's boys these two cars. Right. And they were electric, right? I mean, they, they, well, it's like they're going to go 100 miles an hour, but, you know, I mean, they right. were little cars for little boys. Right. And they had Ed Hardy license plates. They were really super cute. And so I cute. remember the her legal team saying, and I believe it was to Larry Rudolph, saying, hell, signed off on these cars, right? These kids driving around in these cars. Because remember, no. it's not even at Britney's house. So it's at the NASIP. So if those kids get in get an accident or get in a, A, not only is paparazzi above, happy to take photos, probably causing an accident, right? Right. But you've got all this legal stuff. And so the lawyers are sitting there going, who signed off? Do we have insurance? Was oh, that's so, so sad. Uh, right? That's so sad. And I'm in the middle of this event going, oh my, like, uh, this can be my problem in about 10 seconds. So I better right. come up with all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm thinking, who did sign off on this? Who did blah, 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 blah. So, right. And then another question that you would ask before, like, do I do things differently? And another piece is that I get everything signed off. Yeah. Of but how do you make sure that you okay? So let's say that you're doing a wedding and uh I Mark, I don't know why Mark Foreman came to my head. <laughs> anyway, oh my god, so sorry. Anyway, let's say somebody, somebody that's fairly famous, you know, okay. wants to get their wedding, and now you have all these talking heads. Let's yeah. just call them talking heads, right? In your way. How do you make sure that you still get the bride's joy in this? I mean, well, I mean, one of the things I, I always tell my clients is like, you know, my job is to bring the joy back into planning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you got to get rid of the stress. I know that you've got a million legal things to have to deal with contracts, right. et cetera. My job right. is to bring your joy back into having right. some fun with this. Right. How do you make right. sure that your star mm -hmm. gets what she wants or he wants? I mean, that sounds horrendously impossible with well, all these what? talking heads. It's hard. Um, but I think the thing that, well, what I do, I always look for a way in, right? right. So I always look for, and, and it, this just, I think comes with experience, but right. I kind of pay attention to who seems to know the bride, like the celebrity or whatever, the best, right? Like who's there. It might be the personal assistant. It might be the best friend that's hanging out at the meetings. It might be, you know, the public, like who's kind of got the inside track on what makes this person tick. Right. And you can tell, especially when everybody's interacting, you can tell who the celebrity is very comfortable with or who they're kind of like, Oh God, you know, like rolling their eyes with or whatever. And I look for that person. And right. then I try to establish a connection with that person because that's the person who's going to give me the true story. And I try to read their tea leaves Smart. because yeah. Smart. you, because then they're going to be the ones that are going to be like, get her a cappuccino. Like, we'll be fine <laughs> actually, you know, she ain't going to eat, but she'll have some caffeine and we'll turn this thing around, right? And you're right. like, thank you, on it. But you've got to have that inside man, right? Or inside inside woman that's, that's, that's your best, in my opinion, that's your best shot. Because often you're not going to have access to the, the, you know, celebrity client or celebrity right. bride but they're going to feel the ripple effect just because you don't have first person contact. You've got to make sure that whoever is the layers, you know, that are yeah. in contact are delivering her what she wants. And you got to know what does she want. And that's the hard part is because, you know, here you have all these people in between. Right. And I think that, that, that I feel like event planners on in general are empath empathic, right? Yeah. We okay. have, Right. I feel like we have an empathic ability to kind of get what our client is really want. And now that you're separated by so many people, your job to become empathic is, uh, is much harder. And and to be able to produce an event that you're the ultimate client, mm -hmm. let's say Britney Spears walks in and goes, it's perfect. Right. I mean, that moment of oh, that that joy. Of, yes, <laughs> yeah, that elation. That's why we do it, right? I mean, and it doesn't. And at that moment, the uh, world stops on its axis, and it doesn't matter if it's yes. Britney Spears, and it doesn't matter if it's Joe Blow that nobody's ever heard exactly. of. It doesn't matter if it's a charity thing that you did, you know, like for the Today Show. It doesn't matter. Yes. At that moment, that's when all of our like empathic event planner, like 
just want to do the right thing for the client kicks in. And when you're like, yes, like, yes. And that's, that's the everything, YouTube, right? That's everything. And we're learning that more and more with the world. Like sometimes that really is everything. Like those are the things that we can rely on, right? Cause we don't know what else we can rely on, but yeah. we know that that good feeling and is, makes a difference and you know that, that Maya Angela quote that I always butcher but it's something like you know they never know <laughs> what you said or did but you, they know how you made them feel right and 100 percent I go for that like I just go for they don't you know forget about that just how do I make them feel like not rushed do I make right. them feel like they can be relaxed do I make them feel like they're still in love and this is what it was all about you know, did it, did you get, did you get them, you know, on a personal yeah. level, not the publicist level, not no, the, you know, so different. it's so different from a personal standpoint. Like, did you, did you find that one personal thing? And it's not even something that would be publicized. Maybe it's a, a, a special note from the groom on her, you know, on her plate when she right. sits down, you know, it's, right. it's that intimate moment that you're yeah. like, Yes, I got this. I got you. Yeah. You know? And and it's and you're right. You're really right. I think you you articulated it really well when you said, you know, as an empath, like you're kind of going like this person to this person, like right? You're trying to read them, you're trying to look at their face, you're trying to listen to the intonation of their voice. Yeah. And when you have all these layers, it's it's kind of like you're kind of going through the fog. Like it's like <laughs> you're trying to be a psychic. Uh, behind the wallpaper over there, but turn left, turn right, and pick up the aura down the street and a couple zip codes. Like, yeah, it's, you, you really have to pay attention. And so when when we were talking about things that are harder, things that I do differently, mm. I think now I really, re I always paid attention and I always took crazy, ridiculous notes. I, I mean, it's amazing. I'm not like typing yeah. right now because I, <laughs> I I'm always like, and I'm not checking my email. I'm like, hi, I know, I'm totally OCD. And, yeah. You know, and so I'm writing down those notes. And what I found is that I really kind of encourage myself now to write the notes. If all of a sudden something comes to me where I say, seems like she really likes lavender. Yes. You know? I'll put that in and I'll keep it because I find those, that's another yes. little trick. Those are the way in or because people don't realize their patterns or their homes or offices show so much. Like if, if you keep seeing that every single thing she has has like glitter, whether right. it's her nails or her phone case, you start going, how could we work that in? Right. You know? Oh my God. I love that. I just love that. You know, and the, and, and the fact that you had time to write a book. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to get that there. Was an emergency. Let me tell you, I, that book was an emergency. That book well, had to get written. Yeah. Well, so you know, I, I'm actually going to get to your book in a, in a moment because I feel like that came out of COVID somehow. But do you find that there was a difference between pre-COVID and post-COVID when you're talking to your clients? Absolutely. First of all, there's such a, a sense of uncertainty. Yes. Right? We don't know. And we're in California, right? Right. We cannot decide if we are should be in spacesuits. I mean, half the time I go, why don't we just join Elon and everybody and just go to freaking Mars? Because they seem to be the only ones that are in some kind of protective right. And then we're like, okay, now we can right. open. Oh, no, guess what? Now we can't open. Right. Oh, now we can. And then, oh, let's not forget the different counties in California have different. So you're with somebody or you're talking to somebody. And let's say if I'm planning something, Right. For a client who's from San Diego, but I'm planning it to be up in LA, you got to educate them, be like, hey, here, it ain't so chill. You know, right. or same thing with Orange County. It's not that far, like geographically, but right. you have to remind them the rules are different. And then you get these sensitivities involved. So you have a real hesitancy. People are paranoid about the size of their guest list, terrified, like, what oh, I if even think about supposedly, that. Yeah. right? What if supposedly it can be a hundred people, but then bam, and what if somebody famous gets sick? Right. Oh what my if god. There's oh, and oh by the way, like I, I just saw like I'm dating myself hundred percent, but Pat Benatar play I love on her Friday night, amazing. And Good I boot. guess she was supposed to have a different thing. I guess she was supposed to have lover boy or somebody. Right, right. 
and they pulled out right at the last second. Granted, it was the motels. I was ecstatic. But so you now not only you we have it on both ends as planners. Yeah. We have it on the guests not showing up, famous or not, right? right. Which impacts. So now the bride and her groom have paid for all these people. And you have the impact of the entertainment, right? Not showing up potentially. Oh, or how God, do you make that crazy. last minute thing? And then let's not even talk about the contracts because oh, the, everything, what I have found out is that these contracts are so tight and I understand it in the sense of the venues, especially because they've got a lot of skin in the game and they've gotten creamed. Right. But I have to tell you, you got to be prepared to not get that deposit back. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Or you have to have la very tight language in there that says, fine, if it force majeure and all these fancy phrases everybody has, but you've got to have language in there that says, if this thing gets rescheduled, right, that you will get a hundred percent of that deposit credit towards your next event. And what I have learned is you might not get something struck completely from your contract, like, you know, that it can cancel from COVID. You're probably not going to get that struck, right? But right. you can add a line that says you'll have right a first refusal for dates because other people don't think to ask that. Or 100% of my deposit will go towards. Or Smart. boom, 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 boom. That And that's where I think as planners, our value add really comes in because that's Smart. where we can say, I'm going to, listen. I'm going to protect you. Somehow. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to protect you. And my job is to just out Thank you and everybody else, including all the cyber criminals out there. Marcy, do you find that um, because of the drones and such, do you find that there's more of a, um, a movement towards a remote location, meaning that they call it for one location and then they move everybody to the next location? So what I've seen is people trying everything. Right. So they'll try the remote location because they're like, OK, we can keep that under wraps. But here's the problem. The more sophisticated technology gets. And by that, I mean. The ease with which assistance or and I don't I'm not trying to bag on assistance, but like another plan or somebody or the valet texts one of their people and leaves and on their phone, they don't have a password. Right. And right. Somebody sees the text of the venue or. And let's face it, drones can go somewhere that's remote. Or if you, with the, the thing, with these these events, there's so much, right, that goes into it to plan it in the first place. Then to do the bait and switch and move it, you it's it there's there are leaks everywhere because you've still got to keep the staff, right, God. included. Now, let's not forget about the fact that there's a staff shortage. Right, 30% right? here in Florida. <laughs> Not going to, I mean, so now it's like, you know, I'm lucky to get a staff in like, you know, downtown LA on like a Tuesday. Okay. Right. When I got all kinds of people to choose from, let's start talking about you want a staff on a Saturday and oh, it's in LA one day. And then now it's going to be in like Ukaipa. I don't even know where that is, but it's downtown. <laughs> and uh, how, you know, how, right? Like, I don't you, you know that there are going to be things that are happening. So you, you have to start mitigating risk. Like, and you got to start communicating that to your clients because I think right. we're planners. Like you had a great point about the em empathic component is we want it to always be right. And we want to take it on and shield that from our clients, which I still believe we should. Yeah. But I do believe that we've got to keep them in the loop in terms of from early on. These are the possibilities. Yep. I want you to know I'm handling it. This is how I'm handling it, but they've got to be part of the process because should something blow up, you don't want that only on, on your plate, you know, right. and it's, it's, it's counterintuitive to our personalities and to what we do. It's I know. Crazy. And you, and I say that all the time. I say, look, I, I have to give you all of the information in right. order for you to make, be able to make a choice right. based on reality. I'm right. not here to sugarcoat shit. I'm here to make sure logistically your event goes beautifully. Right. And there's going to be things I shield you from, but not yeah. everything. Not right. everything. Because you got to be in the loop. And yeah, yeah and, and as I say, we just have, there's that there's a very fine line, you know, with this stuff, especially whether it's a it's a celebrity event or just a high profile event or just somebody that's wealthy, right? Yeah, 
you, it's just, there are fine lines everywhere, right? Because some people are wealthy and high maintenance and, and control freaks. Mm. And so you want to communicate all this stuff to them. And sometimes the assistant says they're wealthy right. and high maintenance and control freaks. Whatever you do, do not communicate it to them. Right. You know? because they're <laughs> so you're constantly just like, okay, yes. All well, right. you know, I, so I, I, I've brought this up on the show a lot. You know, my mother is one of the smartest people I know. I love her. She's amazing. She was general counsel for American, uh, Great American Insurance. She is ha, it was got her coding degree, an electrical engineering degree, and then got bored and went back and got her law degree. And wow. so one of the things that, and and I've brought this 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 particular thing up on a show before is she she said, look, about a year ago, she said you need to make a decision whether or not you want your business to be a managerial kind of business where you're managing other event planners or you take less clients and you're more involved. And she goes, and that's your choice at this point. Mm -hmm. do, you, um, do you left or right? In the road. And and here's the thing. I don't know if you guys have read the E Myth Revisited by Michael no. Gerber. It's been around a thousand times. I tell every for a thousand years. I tell every entrepreneur in yeah. the world. It's a very quick read. Even if you just get it on Audible, you must read it. It talks exactly about this. Really, where you know it's this pie maker, and she she goes she starts this pie business because she wants to bake pies, and then she's right. baking pies and baking pies and baking pies. But then the next thing, she's like an an, an admin. Right. She's making and then you don't have time to be with the customers and then you're right. managing, you know, the e facts and you're managing all this other stuff. And you and you, you have that question of like, how did I get here? And I right. think that, I'm really glad that you brought that up, because especially now I was going to say post COVID especially <laughs> now on some side of COVID. Right. I, I, now that we're very experienced with COVID, right. we know that. You really have to ask yourself those questions and you really have to say, how did I get here? Do I want to be here? Yeah. Do I want to keep going in this direction? Because sometimes you just, you just start going right. And the next thing you know, you're like, what the frick? <laughs> what the, yes. What the, what, what am I doing here? You know, and, and I'm, I've been listening to your story and I have to tell you, I don't want to be where you are right at the moment because the. I'm not the, sure I do either. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just I'm listening yeah. to because I can feel you. I feel like yeah. I can feel the yeah. the pull between two different things. Of I want to make my the dream come true for my client, who is my right. real client, right? And I have all these idiots on the left hand side and uh, these are my words not yours okay. you know all these idiots on the left hand exactly. side saying no i want this to be this way and i need it to look this way and i need it to come across this way and you're like but that's not the dream well Douche. or they're you know or they're like she's a an influencer for xyz we got to right. make sure we get a shot of her doing this and we got to make <sighs> sure we get shots of this doing that so you're working that stuff into the timeline and then, you know, at some point you're like, listen, this is going to look like a freaking infomercial here. Right. right. And by the time we're done. And yeah, I understand all these people sponsored this and I understand, but you have to just be a really good manager and logistics person. Right. And let's face it. That is often very different from what we got into this industry before. I mean, like Keith or Marcy, if I say to you, yes. guys, hey, did you get into and and I mean Marcy's gonna be like, oh yes, <laughs> I started my career because I would like to walk around with a notebook so I don't forget. <laughs> and I'd like to be on my phone twenty four seven with a battery pack and a backup and my juju with the backup and a, right, you know, and my docu sign up and my you know my high speed your five band four G. I'm on vacation. I mean, nobody you got does into the that. things you you, love you love doing it. events. Right. You know, you like making making people's dreams come alive. I mean, right. that's why we all got into this. And so it's always fascinating for me to talk to someone that is in your position that has gotten to the level and, and figure out how the hell do you continue to create the dream while navigating all these people? And I, And I'm assuming I haven't read your book, but I'm going to. But but are you making any money is a really an, I mean, it's one of those questions that I have now had to start asking myself because 
It's not fun. It's not a fun question. And you'll, no. you'll get it. The book is a fast read. And, and the title came from, I was talking about, oh, and then this event we're going to do. And then this event, you know, typical. Right. And my dad was like, you know, who wouldn't know Britney Spears out of a crowd of one. Was like, <laughs> you know, I don't, like, my dad's like businessman. He's a physician. He's like, bam, bam. Yes. But are you making any money? He's like, right. I'm over this conversation of life is so fabulous. Like, how much <laughs> is in your book account? And how much is in your, like, I'm great about that magazine I've never heard of. I'm sure it's amazing. Right. But are you making any money? And that's why I say when you're like, did, when did you have time? I, listen, I didn't have time not to write the book because that night I had that conversation with my parents. And I remember my dad saying that, and, and there's a thing in the book about it, but like my, the tears welled up to right here. And I always say that women and gay men will appreciate this because I've yet to find a straight man who does where the right. tears are right here and they're about to go over and you're going, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. I know I'm right here with you. I'm like literally right here. I'm like about I to get emotional it. with you because I can <laughs> feel it. I'm like literally thinking about the pressure and everything that right. you're dealing with right now. And I'm just like literally right on the edge with you. Right. And I, and I, when my dad said that to me and I was like, I'm not going to cry at this dinner, but I was like, I would be damned <laughs> if I keep get myself in this position again where i cannot answer that question down to i have 22 dollars and 69 cents in my account but by tomorrow and the money you know whatever right. it is but you've got to know your numbers and so my necessity thing was i i say i wrote the book to solve my own problems because i wanted to be creative and i wanted to have this connection with my clients i did not want to be worried about my margins right. but the easiest way to do that which seems counterintuitive is to do your homework ahead of time. So you pre-qualify like, who is your target audience? What kind of clients do you wanna do? What are your real costs? And that's right. what I'm doing in the book is I give you a billion examples to say, okay, but what about this, this, and this? And then it makes it simple. So then when you're doing your pricing, you just know there are gonna be certain things that are gonna cost you so much more to ship. Right. You know Murphy's Law, you're going to have to pay the <laughs> guy 20 bucks to walk the thing down the hall when you should have had to just tip four. Like, right. Ching, and then you're like. But that comes with, I, I feel like that comes with, and I think we just lost her, but uh, I think that just comes with experience, you know, yeah. over and over and over. You know, we, it just comes with uh, experience. Oh, her connection came back. Oh, thank God. Because uh, we were just in the middle of this amazing conversation. I'm like, please don't, <laughs> don't go away. And that's when Jesus <laughs> comes in and says, boy, she's not making any money. Time for the right. But I mean, I just, and, and that is a hard balance between yeah. what we, I feel like we were born to do. I really yes. do feel like people in the event industry, we were born to do this. This yes. is not yes. one of those industries you walk into lightly. Yeah. It's like nursing. It's like being a, a physician. People don't do it because, oh, I want to make a lot of money. I guarantee you, talk to every physician out there. They're like, for the first 20 years, I made shit. Yeah. All right. So, you know, and, and so I feel like the same thing comes with event planners. It is a DNA kind yeah. of position and so to get to a point where you have to ask yourself these hard questions about right. am i making i i love what i do i love me and that moment of when the bride walks into her room for the first time and <gasps> you know tear 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 it's like okay right. makeup artist come back in here you know kind of thing right but when you go home are you able to pay your light bill? Are you able to pay, you know, your assistant? Right. Are you able to get ready for the next event? And I feel like your book is really important for people to read. And I'm going to be one of those people, FYI, because I have a hard time with that. Well, and let's face it. The other thing too, I say is, and is it, do you love that tear and that look in the bride's eye enough to get divorced over? Or whatever and the reason i say this is like like joking aside is because yes you know, a partner uh, like a spouse a significant other it's they get really tired with good reason of right. hearing over and over oh no like i'm gonna get this job and it's gonna be better and like no i'm gonna make and they're because they don't want to see you put your blood sweat and tears into something that somebody's paying you pennies for that you can be making more money at mcdonald's right right they don't want to see you. It's hard. And so you have to make sure that you 
that you're considering the people around you because a lot of times, you know, there's obviously a lot of women in this industry and I've coached a lot of them who are married, who the husband's just going, come on, like, this is like, I know this is your dream, but it's now not our dream because our kids aren't bad. You know, like whose dream is this? Cause last time I checked, you, you know, you're not even looking so hot. Like you haven't even had a <laughs> So, are you talking to my husband? I right? was like, are you talking to my husband? I, that's okay. I'm like, oh my well, God. I had a couple husbands, so let me tell you. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm good at talking to him or, you know. Oh, I'm seriously. Good. I'm like, oh my God. I feel like I've had this literally exact same conversation. Well, and and I we did actually have this exact same conversation a couple of year ago, years ago, and right. I had to make the hard decision. It's like, right. I can't save every human being on this planet, you know? Right. I, right. I, as many and what i do now is i will do a counseling session with people that can't afford my services right. and right. give them an hour of my time and right. say here's who you should contact this is what you should do i can't personally do this for you but i want to give you as much information and so right. here's an hour of free time so to speak and you know the other thing which i talk about in my book if you're not doing this already what i would consider is whether it's that that you're doing or whenever we discount something because the freaking empaths, you know, we're always discounting some damn thing. What is and that about like, us? And they didn't even appreciate it. Well, A, they didn't even know they got the gift, right? So right? one thing is when you do discount something, put on the invoice or send them an invoice, even if it's going to be comped to zero. So right. they go, Bleh. like, because what I found is that then when they come back to negotiate something different later, you're like, you know, hi, I already discounted this, this, and this. And nobody can thank you for a gift they don't even know they got. Mm -hmm. So right? smart. And then you're not bitter either. You're oh. like, oh, yeah. You know? That is they don't see the value. If that it's is not fair. so insightful. Right. And I have to tell you, we've been doing, we've done this show for a year, almost, we're, for a year and three quarters at this point, uh, over a hundred shows and not a single person has come up with this. Mm -hmm. This well, is the first time I've heard this and I find it really impactful. Because you, you, that's what, you know, we get to be martyr. Like we're empaths, but then we're martyrs. We're doing this, but then we're upset. They didn't get it. They didn't get it at all. Oh. You know, I start thinking, did they even freaking know that you did it? Well, no, yeah. because blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you know what? There's something you don't have to shove it in their faces, and I'm signing an affidavit. Right. But there is a gentle, blah blah blah, and it'll and like on our invoices, we'll say comped per Marley or like a gift from Marley or something like that, so that they go, wow. And we I get it. What it's a gift. Value is right. And then discount it so that they see it and they are like, oh my gosh, or like the equivalent of you throwing in extra lighting. Right. Please throw in extra lighting. But please also let them know that that was a really kind gesture that you did that you did not have to do. And you added the pin spotting that they wanted, but they cut because of their budget. That's the kind of stuff that tells the story long after the event is is finished. And that's the kind of stuff that that creates a lasting company and creates a great reputation. And when we're talking about like little things to stand out or to market our businesses or whatever, those right. are the things because it's like, wow. That was really nice. You it's know? weird that you even brought up lighting because it's kind of one of my things. I bought a whole bunch of op lighting because I got tired of dealing with AV companies and their stupid battery powered. Okay. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I just, I, I just suck and got over it. You know, yeah. you, you want to charge me $50 an up light and I can buy it on Amazon for 55. What are you talking right. about? Right? Right. right. So I just, I did, I did that actually. I bought a whole bunch of battery powered up lighting and I just bring it to an event. I don't ever tell a client. I just of course you don't. And then you know what? Here's the other thing, because I learned this the hard way. I would do stuff like that too. Lighting is a great one because, like, let's say you are charging them for a certain amount of lighting, and then whatever, you just throw a little bit more on the truck. Right. And then they don't know they got, but then here's why you're sinking your own ship, or why I will speak for myself why I was sinking my own ship yeah. is because then the client thinks next time that that's what it's always gonna look like. And you're See? like, oh, no, like I comped you and I did this great service for you before. No, 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 no. It is going to look dark and dingy. I got a bad year. <laughs> you better like this. Thing. Right. And then and then it's like no good deed goes unpunished. Right. right? <laughs> so they can still choose to do no lighting. But but you need to know this was a magical gift that I was feeling. And right now you're very high maintenance. And I'm not feeling much. 
<laughs> well, okay. So I, let me, let me, I'm going to change the conversation a little bit. Um, so I, there's a, a local event planner that I just love. Her name is Anna Hess. She just started. She it, it's, she's in my age, our age. And she just now started a business about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And she's like one of those people that I just think is amazing and will do amazing stuff yeah. but but she is a new business owner and yeah. she is a new planner being somebody that has been in the industry what would you what would be a piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's just starting out and not and oh. not a newbie we're not talking about an 18 year old we're somebody that has a life experience you I, know I, I get it i mean i right. i work with a lot of people who have left xyz career in corporate America to do this. So they're very smart and very right. successful at what they do, but they're switching. So the first thing I would say is my A number one advice for that is determine who your target audience is mm -hmm. and make sure you know how much. So if you decide I'm making this up, you know, right. month of brides or your deal really have tracked your time so you know how much it takes time and money to service a day of bride and then ask those intake questions in the very beginning and if it is not a fit say thank you we are not a fit i can't tell you how mm. much trouble we get in because we want the deposit mm -hmm. we want the job we want to be busy why i have no idea but we do <laughs> we want to be we can say, oh, I'm booking into 2029 or whatever. And right. Can say that right. Exactly. You know, you must not be freaking charging enough because, <laughs> um, because there ain't no way, right? Right. So, so it's determine you, you've got to do that intake and and whatever Jesus God above you do, do not <laughs> do that intake per like uh whatever one on one. Right. Right. No way. It's a waste of time. You've got to pre-qualify those clients ahead of time. Wow. Then graduate to the one-on-one -on -one if they've really gone through the hoops. But but I hate to say it, and this this took me forever to learn. Right. Most clients are not my clients. Right. And that is okay. That doesn't mean you're understanding them wrong. That doesn't mean you don't have good vendors to price things. That doesn't right. mean your vendors are ripping you off. No, it just means that most people think something should cost this and it costs this. Right. And they don't do it all the time, but you've got to stick to your guns. You can't, you know, go into foreclosure right. because you're, you're taking on all these clients because guess what? The, your other clients are going to suffer. The ones who really do value you and right. who really do appreciate that note from the you know, groom to the bride to whatever, right? We are going to get lost. You're going to, not to mention, you're going to get lost, but it's, we've all been there. You take the client and then you take the next one, you take the next one, and it's a race to the bottom. And then you're just busy and you're burned out. Yeah. I actually had to fire my first client during COVID and I've never had to do that before. And it was a real test of like who I am as as a business owner and as an event planner it was hard i have to tell you it was emotional for me like well, it it drained me trash. and then here's the other thing i don't know about you guys but then i start to go like what did i do wrong yes like, did i oh did I it's like battered wife syndrome I, seriously like mm -hmm. i'm like what did i do oh my god You're like I, I was in sweats and i, I didn't <laughs> lose the baby weight until <laughs> I was two months old. Uh, right 100 wow. percent. i'm doing all that i'm doing all that have you ever had to turn down a, a famous person yes and yeah. yes because for for yes <laughs> just, uh, well we won't go further than that i just wanted yeah, to like you know i can just give you some specifics is sometimes you need to when the entitlement is there and you just feel like they're already entitled and they want the moon and they're right. putting up all these restrictions for you. So right. what I mean by that is if they, they want a lot for your services or whatever, and they're like, Oh my God, I'll give you whatever photos you want. Yes. You can put me on your Instagram story. Cause there are some that, and you're like, then it's a transaction, right? Then right. you're, it makes sense. You're paying for photos. You, like right a, absolutely a discount but you it's you got to keep thinking of it that way is this right. 
does it do, is this a win-win for everybody? Because at the end of right. the day, you're in business and, and I don't care how much money you make, but, but then don't be in business. Do this as a hobby for fun and do a few events a year and, and enjoy your life. But a business has to be run like a business. So it's kind of like you opening up a genie bottle and then you have to put the genie back, <laughs> back in because you don't want it. <laughs> have you ever tried to put feathers back into a pillow in the wind? <laughs> That's Ain't a great happen. way to put it. Marley, anyway. you have been amazing. I have to tell you, I, I this is not what I expected this, <laughs> this to go like. And I'm just so thrilled with you and this conversation. And I just feel i can feel you it's just i can Thank feel your you. passion i can feel your joy i can feel i mean i'm now now more than ever i want to read your book because now i feel like you wrote it on purpose not it just was written on purpose. It was, it was called the bank is calling you're overdrawn again it was very good for us. Written on purpose. and um yeah and it's just all about how all this can look fabulous but then let's have a real conversation about yeah. it's not so fabulous. And that doesn't mean you don't do it, but it just means talk to people who are going to tell you how it is. And it's like having kids. It's great, but yeah. there's a lot of hardship. And I'm so grateful that you reached out and that I got to be on here. Oh, and I'm like I'm so excited that you said yes. <laughs> I'm like, and I just feel like it was just such a great conversation overall. And I'm really glad that we finally got the connection issues worked out because <laughs> This honestly, this was fantastic. I, and thank I'm just you. so thrilled. So, um, again, thank you. We're here every Tuesday at two o'clock with Behind the Veil next week. God knows what, what will happen, but we'll see because it's always live. Uh, and for the moment, say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.